Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the second and final video in IB Biology Higher Level Topic 10, Genetics and Evolution, where we will be looking at chromosomal linkage, dihybrid crosses, and the chi-squared test. In the fourth video of our IB Biology Topic 3 video series, we introduced alleles with regards to sex chromosomes and autosomes. Remember that during meiosis, these alleles separated into the daughter cells called segregation. During this process, there are two different types of genes, unlinked and linked. Unlinked genes are on different chromosomes. As a result, they segregate independently of one another, called independent assortment. Linked genes are on the same chromosome, so they segregate with one another, called dependent assortment. However, note that if linked genes are far apart on the chromosome and crossing over occurs, these genes switch chromosome and so appear unlinked because they undergo independent assortment. Whilst in topic 3 we learnt about the inheritance of one gene at a time, higher level students are expected to consider two genes together. However, you must also be aware that some characteristics are controlled by more than two genes, known as polygenic characteristics. Before covering the inheritance of two genes together, let's quickly outline this. When modelling the variation of polygenic characteristics, as the number of genes increases, the distribution more closely represents the normal distribution. The common examples you will encounter are skin and hair colour. Interestingly, skin colour is also influenced by the environment, despite being a polygenic characteristic. A similar process occurs in mice, where different levels of nutrition can affect the colour of fur. Now that you understand genes and their linkage fully, we can learn the inheritance of two genes and how this changes when genes are linked versus non-linked. The inheritance of two genes is represented using dihybrid crosses for both unlinked and linked genes. Let's start with unlinked genes by reviewing Mendel's observation of the inheritance of seed shape and colour. Here the allele for a round shape, uppercase R, is dominant to wrinkled, lowercase r, and yellow colour, uppercase Y is dominant to a green colour, lowercase y. Mendel bred two heterozygous parent plants with round yellow seeds, i.e. uppercase R, lowercase R, uppercase Y, lowercase Y. These therefore had the gametes of uppercase R, uppercase Y, uppercase R, lowercase Y, lowercase R, uppercase Y, and lowercase R, lowercase Y. Completing a Punnett grid with these four gametes for each parent, by placing them on the top and left within circles, we can create a total of 16 offspring genotypes. These correspond to the four phenotypes of round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green. With monohybrid crosses of two heterozygous parents, Mendel saw a ratio of phenotypes of 3 to 1, as covered in our topic 3 video series. However, in dihybrid crosses as here, with two unlinked genes, Mendel saw a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So, you now grasp the difference in a phenotypic ratio between the inheritance of one or two genes. However, linked genes affect this 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Let's now use the same example, but assume the genes for seed shape and colour are linked. Starting with the same parents, there would be only two gametes for each parent. Uppercase R, uppercase Y, and lowercase r, lowercase y, since the alleles are on the same chromosome and so cannot separate. Completing a Punnett grid with these two gametes for each parent, placing them on the top and left within circles, this time with a line to represent linkage, i.e. a chromosome, we can find a total of four offspring genotypes. Uppercase r, r, y, y, uppercase r, lowercase r, uppercase y, lowercase y, uppercase r, lowercase r, uppercase y, lowercase y, and lowercase r, r, y, y. These correspond to the phenotypes of round yellow and wrinkled green. So, dihybrid crosses of two linked genes produces a phenotypic ratio of 3 to 1, identical to monohybrid crosses. Two important terms used in dihybrid crosses of linked genes are parental and recumbent genotypes. Let's define them. Parental genotypes are the offspring genotypes identical to the original parents. So here, the two heterozygous 
uppercase R, lowercase R, uppercase Y, lowercase Y genotypes. Recumbent genotypes are the offspring genotypes different to the original parents. So here, the homozygous dominant, uppercase RRYY, and homozygous recessive, lowercase RRYY genotypes. Questions can sometimes take the form of visual representations of chromosomes using straight lines, asking you to identify recumbent and parental genotypes. The principles are exactly the same. It is just a different way of representing the information. If we took the same example of two heterozygous parents, we could express both their chromosomes visually as uppercase R, uppercase Y, two lines, lowercase R, lowercase Y. We could therefore easily see the gametes being each of these chromosomes as alleles, i.e. uppercase R, uppercase Y, and lowercase R, lowercase Y. Thus, the genotypes of the offspring could be expressed as uppercase ry, two lines, ry, uppercase r, uppercase y, two lines, lowercase r, lowercase y, uppercase r, uppercase y, two lines, lowercase r, lowercase y, and lowercase ry, two lines, ry. We can therefore clearly see the two parental genotypes are indicated by the first two, and the recumbent by the last two. Easy. But what if crossing over occurs during meiosis as the parents create their gametes? Well, let's use the same example covering for the dihybrid crosses of two linked genes with crossing over. Starting with the same parents, there would be the same two gametes for each parent, i.e. uppercase R, uppercase Y, and lowercase R, lowercase Y, plus an additional two generated due to the exchange of alleles in crossing over. Lowercase R, uppercase Y, and uppercase r, lowercase y, i.e. a total of four. Completing a Punnett grid with these four gametes for each parent, placing them on the top and left within circles, with lines to represent linkage, we can create a total of 16 offspring genotypes, categorised in four phenotypic groups. You should recognise this looks identical to the dihybrid cross of two unlinked genes, and you're right. So you may think that the ratio of phenotypes would also be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. However, this does not occur. We see a rough ratio of many to fewer to fewer to some. This is because recumbent genotypes are only created during crossing over, whilst parental genotypes are produced both with and without crossing over. This skews away from the expected 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, to the observed many to fewer to fewer to some ratio. When this discrepancy between an observed and expected ratio occurs, it therefore identifies that the genes are linked. However, to be sure, we can mathematically test if the difference between the two is statistically significant, using a chi-squared test. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.